Hi, hello, Neil Millard here with you once again for another exciting video. This week we're going to talk about cloud security and where to start. Let's get into it. Where to start with cloud security? For this example, I'm going to use a web application running on a web server, but it could easily be a Docker container or something else like that. So the first place we start is ports. Better explain what a port is first. Every web application that's listening on the network, a network service, if you will, has two parts to its address so that you can talk to it as a customer, a user of the system. The first part is the IP address, IPv4, IPv6. Most users don't see this because that's what DNS is for. You type in the host name, it resolves it to the IP and the server knows where it's talking to. The second bit is the port address. Now there's some standard ports like port 80 for HTTP traffic and port 443 for HTTPS traffic. So those get resolved automatically. You don't normally see them in the URL when you type it into a web browser. But other ports like 8080 or 5000 are quite often used behind the scenes if they're hosting something like a Java app or a Python application. So every service running on the server or the container, if it's started and is a network service, it's listening on a port. And it's probably not desirable for the whole internet to be able to talk to your server on that port because it gets access to other things, FTP, Telnet, SSH, that sort of thing that you don't want the general public to access. The only thing you want them to access is the web application port so they can talk to your web application. You can restrict access to the ports on your service by using security groups on AWS and Azure or by using firewall rules on GCP. What else? Well, that's where a web application firewall might come in. Web application firewall is another application that runs in front of your application and it inspects and filters traffic as it comes in. This can be useful because it can spot for patterns in the requests like a SQL injection attack or something like that and then reject it or just stonewall it, not provide a response at all, thus saving your web application from having to filter for those in the first place or indeed being a victim of those attacks. User access. This is a big subject. Broadly speaking, you have users and you have administrators. You don't want the users to get administrative access to the backend application. And the same reason you don't want administrators to be logged in as users and have their powers curtailed. They wouldn't be able to help the users in that case. A privilege based system is quite often in place where you give the privileges to a role and the role to a user. That way you can give the least amount of privileges to each particular user on the system ensuring that they can't break stuff that they need to or they get access to something that maybe they shouldn't be able to see in a case of users or admins can't delete certain people if they're not privileged to do so. There are two types of administrators. There's the application administrator and the infrastructure administrators. The application administrators are kind of like power users in that they log in through the app and they can do various functions within that application depending on what you've designed within that app. Infrastructure administrators on the other hand, they control more about the servers and the networks and stuff that the application is actually running on. Infrastructure definitely shouldn't be accessible from the internet. Most systems that I've used with the administrator's machine is first authenticated with an internal network using a VPN and then on top of that the administrative user infrastructure in this case then gains access to other resources after they've done that. Or we can reduce the time access to our application. Administrators for instance we might only expect them to be available during the work day so if anyone tries to log in as an administrator outside of office hours we can reasonably reject that request straight away. However, sessions can also be timed out. So if you've got a one hour restriction for an administrative user to be logged in the system, it then logs them out automatically and they have to re-log in again. This makes sure that no extra sessions with elevated privileges are hanging about on a machine that someone should get access to. Users on your hand, you might be a bit more generous with your timeout. Maybe they can stay logged in for up to a day or 24 hours before it gets uh, requested for them to log back in again. 
MFA functions a bit like this. On the initial logon, you'll get your username and your password, and then a time-limited code that can only be replicated once for that user. This provides a better level of security because you know it's the whoever's got access to that ever-changing code is logging in at a time. If you've got code running on your server that's not written by you or your team, then you need to make sure that that's got no bugs in it. That can be tricky. If you've got access to the source code, it could be time consuming to look through that code. Or in other technologies, we've got scanning stuff. So for instance, my current customer runs a piece of software that every Docker container that gets created then gets scanned for all of the software that's in it, including the dependencies. This means that when we know the version of a dependency that's installed, we can see how long ago it was, whether it's been updated since, or whether there have been any security or bugs reported against that specific version. And if there are, we want to update it as soon as possible. In fact, it's usually best practice to keep all the dependencies up to date as far as you can. This can be a laborious process depending on the package manager you're using, but it's very important to make sure that those bugs once spotted are fixed and then that fix is rolled out to your servers as soon as you can. Well, I hope that quick list gets you started and uh, keeps you off of Have I Been Pwned because we don't want to see you on Slashdot or any new sites with your website users' data being leaked on the internet. So until next time, see you later.